Good morning, St. Paul's. Let us worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high. for the readings. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abraham, how great is the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah, and how very grave their sin. I must go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me. And if not, I will know. 
So the men turned from there and went towards Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are 50 righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not forgive it for the 50 righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is right and just? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose, suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for the lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. Again he spoke to him, Suppose forty are found there. He answered, For the sake of forty, I will not do it. Then he said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose thirty are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. He said, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose twenty are found there. He answered, For the sake of twenty, I will not destroy it. Then he said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose ten are found there. He answered, For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Colossians. As you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. 
Seek to do it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision, by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you all alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or of observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions, puffed up without, a, without cause by a human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth that is from God. This is the word of the Lord. Even though he will not 
not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? That's the Lord. Praise be to Meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Good morning. Good morning. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. So begins the Gospel from Luke, chapter 11. I thought giving a sermon about the composing of the Lord's Prayer would be easy. After all, everyone has memorized this by the time they're four. How hard could it be? Well, I found out. Something that gives us such a warm and fuzzy feeling each time we say it is bound to be intimidating. The Lord's Prayer was learned at a young age and imprinted in our hearts forever. I was wondering how many other times Jesus taught us to pray, but a very wise friend of mine explained that there really is no other time. Why should he write another when this one prayer is already perfect? We don't need a second Mona Lisa. It offers praise to him and a request for blessing for us and ends with more praise. So what can we take away from this? Well, we are comforted to know that this is what he wants us to say. The sheer joy and confidence in the prayer pleases him. When all other words fail us, it's still there. There's also a version of the Lord's Prayer in Matthew, the difference being that the Matthew version is somewhat longer and is closer to what we say every Sunday than the Luke version. However, in Matthew, he was speaking to the multitudes on the Sermon on the Mount. In Luke, it was more simple. The disciples merely asked him how to pray, and he replied with a simpler version. Some of you may remember Red Skelton, a Hoosier, by the way. He did a wonderful version of the Pledge of Allegiance, which he took each phrase and discussed its meaning and I'd like to try that now with the Lord's Prayer. 
So let's start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. Our Father, who art in heaven, this is to whom we are speaking and who we are addressing. Hallowed be thy name. We are offering praise. We are worshiping and showing reverence to him alone. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let your will that is in heaven be done here on earth. We are asking for heaven to be on earth. All the paradise and joy be here with us. Give us this day our daily bread. Provide for us whatever is needed, spiritually, physically, and emotionally. Give us stronger constitutions. Give us opportunities for learning and bettering ourselves. Give us whatever it is that you judge that we need. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Another word for trespass here could be the word sin. Asking for forgiveness for what we do wrong, and then we will pass that forgiveness on to others. Some churches use the word debts and debtors. This does not necessarily mean a financial obligation, although it can. The historian in me had to look this up. And the first of the English translations from 1395 actually does use the word debts. Like all God's gifts, forgiveness brings responsibility. It must be passed on. And lead us not into temptation. Don't be caught up in the material pleasures given, not by ourselves, by others, or by Satan. We just ask for our daily bread. That's really all that we should need. But deliver us from evil. Some translations say, let us not yield to temptation. Whether it is something bad that we have done or something being done to us, please take it away however you see fit. As we are learning in our study of the book of Daniel, there are three ways you can be delivered. You can be delivered from whatever is bothering us, pray and it goes away. You can be delivered through it, do all that you can and it comes out okay. Or you can be delivered by it. In the case of an illness, this would mean that you go to be with God. And as Charlie said when he'd had enough, I can't wait to meet Jesus. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. This is called the doxology of the prayer and was actually not included in Luke's original version. But a phrase like this is added to the end of many prayers. Another example of this would be, yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. And so the prayer ends as it begins with a vision of God in heaven. I found that how the prayer is used is interesting. Have you ever noticed that we say the Lord's Prayer every time we do any kind of a service of some sort? Morning prayer, evening prayer, every Eucharist, each time we do Stations of the Cross, funerals, weddings, we even say it at our vestry meetings, the list goes on. This prayer applies to all aspects of our everyday life. This same Gospel of Luke goes on to say, for everyone who asks, receives, and everyone who searches, finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. By this we are told to keep on asking, seeking, and knocking. All three verbs are continuous. Jesus is not speaking of single activities, please let me get a home run but of those that persist, such as good health and safe travels. One way to use the Lord's Prayer is for guidance. Whenever you're making a difficult decision, call upon God for help. He is truly with us. He will make sure we make the best decision under the circumstances. 
Let us now recite the Lord's Prayer and maybe consider all that it says with new meaning. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. He shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Susie, I'm moved to say this. That was outstanding. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy. Give grace to Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Michael, our presiding bishop, Doug, our bishop, and Michelle, our priest, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth a true and lively word, 
and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Lord, in thy mercy. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in thy mercy. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, Eric, our governor, and Tom, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Lord, in thy mercy. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Lord, in thy mercy. We most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Derek, Tom, Greg, Steve, Mary, Alda, Bill, Gordy, Tom, Winnie, Rebecca, Lauren, Helen, Barb, Doris, and Marianne, and all immigrants and refugees, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in thy mercy. We commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad, especially Raymond, Megan, and Carson. Defend them day by day with thy heavenly grace and grant them a sense of thy abiding presence wherever they may be. Lord, in thy mercy. Holy Creator, as the pandemic begins to ebb, we ask for your continued protection and guidance. For those that are weary from caring for the ill, we ask for refreshment. For those who have suffered from the disease, we ask for restoration to health. And for all of us, we continue to ask for your wisdom in our daily decisions as we move into this new season of COVID. Lord, in thy mercy. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the ever-blessed Mary, St. Paul, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy. Almighty God, God, our Heavenly Father, guide the nations of the world into the way of justice and truth, and establish among them that peace which is the fruit of righteousness, that they may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Which 
proceed from time to time most previously apprehended. By thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. Do our sins again, and our heart be sorry for these times to us. Give our sins to us, but our heart has been tolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. And at this time, we would offer prayers for birthdays and anniversaries. I have three birthdays listed for this week. One is our very own Mike Konechny, whose birthday is tomorrow. One is Winnie Irick, who will be celebrating on Martha's Vineyard. And one is our very own Mona Coulter. So we will pray for all three of these birthdays. Have I missed any? No. Okay, let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray on your servants, Mike, Mana, and Winnie, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace, and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I do not have any anniversaries listed. Have I missed anyone's anniversary? Okay. Then the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share the peace. Peace, John. Peace. Please be seated. I don't have much in terms of announcements today. Uh, I do want to remind everyone that on the back of your in brief is the schedule for all of our upcoming, I should say, for our next two upcoming community dinners. You can see we're all filled in except for, I think, one thing on August 2nd. So if you would like to bring a dessert, then please contact Susie. Susie would be... Oh, in the veggie tray. Thank you. Um, this is this is where Mother Michelle needs to put on her glasses so she can actually read and not go from memory. So forgive me with that. So uh, we had a wonderful dinner on Tuesday evening, despite the heat, and uh, we're just thankful to be back and worshiping and fellowshipping together. Jean, do you have any announcements that I need to make? What's that? Wednesday, yeah, true, that's true. Uh, Wednesday is our chair and church event at Fox Park at 7 o'clock, but we are also um, in charge of concessions on that day. So if you can come and help us with concessions, especially if you're someone who's willing to go out and walk around and sell popcorn, we'd appreciate that. Uh, if you're going to be there for concessions, please arrive by 6.30 so that we can have the popcorn made and uh, be ready to do that. Anything else? 
All right, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
and only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we in all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we, and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion, may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom am I heaven, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee. O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say,
merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and be in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be God. God. 